Hi, this is Mato. Welcome to my online chess lecture. In this video I will show you a game between Prince Dadian and Jackie. This game was played in Kiev in 1903. Prince Dadian had white pieces and he started with e4. Jackie played e5. Knight to c3, going for the Vienna game, maybe. Knight to f6, white to move. f4 is the most played move. Prince Dadian played g3. This is known as the Mises variation. Bishop to c5, d3. The pawn structure is like that one on the king's Indian attack, isn't it? d6, bishop to e3, castling. Bishop takes on e3 was for the first time seen in 1999 and black lost the game. Back to our game. Castling, queen to d2, knight to c6, f4. Bishop takes on e3, queen takes on e3, knight to d4, castling c5. So far, Jackie is doing well. f5, bishop to d7, intending b5, bishop to e2, b5, h4. Pawn storms on both sides of the board. Queen to a5. There is a feeling that black is faster. What do you think? Prince Dadian played g4, b4, knight to b1, queen takes on a2. Black is a pawn up and doing well. I guess Prince Dadian couldn't boast an opening advantage. The game continued. g5, knight to e8, knight to f3, queen to a4. Threatening checkmate, provoking a weakness. b3 was played, queen to a1. The white king is now even more exposed. Can white do something quickly on the king's side? What would you do? Prince Dadian played f6. g6 was played. a5. The analysis after the game has shown that a5 was a way to go. g6. This move makes sense too. Black wants to close the files before launching an attack on the queen's side. Knight takes on d4, c takes on d4, queen to f2, a5, h5, rook to c8. Well, uh, a4 must wait because h takes on g6 is unpleasant. If f takes on g6, then rook takes on h7, winning the game. If king takes rook, then queen to h4 check, king to g8, rook to h1. And black pieces are ready for another game. Back to our game. Rook to c8 was played. Bishop to f3. If h takes on g6, then f takes on g6. And if queen goes to h2 now, then rook to f7. And let's take it back. And what about rook takes on h7? What happens then? The knight takes on f6. If pawn takes knight, then rook takes on c2. King takes rook. Queen to a2 check. King to c1. Rook to c8 check. Winning the game. Back to our game. So we have bishop to f3. Bishop to e6, queen to h2. Bishop takes on b3, the pawn is pinned. Rook to d2 defending. Bishop to a2. Looks like black is winning. King to d1, black to move and this is the critical position of the game. Jackie played the obvious, bishop takes knight. Well, that is better than a queen takes. If queen takes knight, then white wins after king to e2. And then pawn takes pawn on g6. Let's take it back. Rook to c7 was a way to go. In the 21st century, top grandmasters using top chess engines discovered this very strong move. 
and let's see how this works. If h takes on g6 now, then f takes on g6, and after king to e2, h5, and black is standing better. Back to our game. We have bishop takes a knight, h takes on g6, bishop takes on c2, double check, king to e2, and the game is over. Black lost, but the game continued. Bishop takes on d3 check, king to f2. And what now? Just to prolong the game, Jackie played queen takes rook, g takes on h7 check, king to h8, queen takes queen, bishop to b5, queen to h6, and black resigned. The threat is queen takes rook. The rooks are not connected, and if knight to c7, then queen to g7, checkmate. It looks like that Prince Tadian was a bit lucky in this game, but there is a saying that better players are always lucky. What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess and bye for now.